Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of New Westminster's Sunday celebration service. Please join us for our opening song today. The hills are alive with the sound of music. they have sung for a thousand years. The hills fill my heart with the sound of music. My heart wants to sing every song it hears. My heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that rise from the lake to my heart wants to sigh like a child that flies from a church on a breeze. To laugh like a brook when it trips and falls over stones on its way. To sing through the night like a lark who is learning to pray. I I've heard before My heart will be blessed With the sound of music And I'll sing once more Welcome back. I am Reverend Rona Segura, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our Sunday celebration service at Unity of New Westminster in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Whether you are watching us live on Zoom or on Facebook or on YouTube, or whether you are finding us on demand after the service, it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of all of us here. We would love to stay connected with you. So please subscribe to our newsletter on our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our Facebook group. And that way you will be notified anytime we have a service. We are so glad that you are part of our experience today. The Unity Movement offers ideas for full and abundant living. We draw on the teachings of Jesus, who we consider our primary way shower and example. And we honor that there is wisdom in faith traditions all over the world. We respect every person's right to choose their own spiritual path, their own life path. All are welcome here. All are worthy here. All are celebrated here. We open our service today in prayer. I gratefully acknowledge that I speak to you on the traditional and unceded territory of the Semiamu First Nation. And we give thanks to First Nation peoples everywhere for their custody of this beautiful land. We give thanks for our connection one with each other. That connection that happens whether we are in each other's physical presence or not. That connection that binds us all together We acknowledge that there is only one presence, that there is only one power, that power that is understood by many names, 
many faces and many paths. And we affirm that regardless of the name, the face, or the path of our understanding, that we are one human family. And it is in that knowledge of our oneness that we send a blessing for love, for peace, for contentment to every being on this planet, to every being, regardless of all the labels that threaten to divide us. We are one. And for this knowledge, for this intention, and for the power that we have to bless, we give thanks. Amen. Welcome to week seven of our Summer of the Sound of Music. We started seven weeks ago looking at the song, The Hills Are Alive with the Sound of Music. And today we end our series with the last song that we will look at. That song is Edelweiss. Weeks ago, when we began this journey, we looked at the idea of going to the hills when our hearts are lonely. And we spoke about the idea that although God is found and experienced everywhere by many people, some people feel that they they touch God and that presence of God near water, and others prefer to be in their gardens, and others find that same sense of oneness when they're in forest, and many find it in the mountains. We use the mountains as a metaphor for going to this higher place that represents God this place where we see things from a higher perspective, a place of understanding a deeper wisdom than we may otherwise understand. And all of that is represented by mountain, the place where we find this expansive insight, this place where we find God. And so even though we honor that there is God everywhere and people find God everywhere, let's just continue with the metaphor today of the mountains as representing God in whatever your understanding of God might be, whether it be energy, quantum, the force, mother nature, um, creator, spirit, the mountains represent God, represent spirit, represent creator. And in that context, we see a little flower that is growing out of and a part of that mountain. It is a little white flower that is growing in places one would never expect it to grow, in harsh environments, in meadows, but also in rocky outcroppings, in places where there are elements that the flower is exposed to, where there is heat sometimes, but severe cold other times, where there is snow, where there is ultraviolet radiation, where there is wind, a place one wouldn't expect anything to grow. And in that place, a little furry white flower 
blooms, and it is called Edelweiss. In the movie, Edelweiss, the song Edelweiss is a waltz, and it is presented almost as if it's a folk song, so cleverly written that people actually believed it was a folk song that originated in Austria, when in fact it was just written for the movie. And there is something that's enduring and lovely about this song. The words themselves are simple and beautiful. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, every morning you greet me, small and white, clean and bright. You look happy to meet me. Blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, bless my homeland forever. The song is sung as a love song, not just to the flower and in appreciation of the flower, which is beautiful and resilient and pure and lovely, but also sung symbolically for what the flower represents which is all that is beautiful, resilient, pure, and lovely about the homeland of Austria. And we can apply that symbolism, the symbolism of both the flower and the symbolism of the words in the song to us. Because just as wild, as Edelweiss is a wildflower that grows naturally, in the rocky outcroppings of the mountain and expressing life from the mountainside. So we can think of ourselves as natural outpourings and expressions of the one power, energy, life, creation, spirit. Just as we can see Edelweiss both as an individual plant and unique and beautiful, we can also recognize that it is part of the mountain, an intrinsic part of the mountain, and so it is with us. We, each of us, can see ourselves as distinct and that we are part of that creative power that we call God. Just as Edelweiss is part of the mountain, so we are part of energy, part of God. And this is unity's first and second principles put together. The first principle is that there is only one power. And the second is that we are part of that power because if there is only one power, one present one presence, then there is no spot that God is not, and that must include us. And so we are individually expressing and expressions of that one power, each one of us. That means that every person that we have ever met, every person we haven't met, everything, every being, every animal, every, every everything, is an expression of one power. And so for today's talk, encourage us to think of God being the mountain and we being the Edelweiss. So we are the expression from the mountain. And now let's look at some of the properties of Edelweiss, both as a plant and as it is sung in the song, and see how Edelweiss can represent aspects of us. What can we learn from the song and the flower? Well, the first thing that we can learn is that it is our nature to expand, to live, to bloom, and to grow. 
in the song, we find the words, blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow forever. The Edelweiss plant itself the, is used as a symbol of alpinism, of climbing mountains, uh, alpine mountains, high mountains, um, the ability to challenge oneself, the ability to overcome fear. It is used as a badge and insignia and symbol by mountaineering clubs to represent the courage it takes to overcome hardship and the promise of the reward at the end of the hardship. And if you think about that flower, it is hard to imagine that beneath the darkness of the cold elements, subjected to darkness, freezing temperatures, the absence of anything that feels and looks nourishing, Edelweiss is alive. When we see this plant that is so small and so lovely, it's hard to imagine that it can withstand so much stress. And yet, it clings to the mountain and the mountain holds onto it and anchors it despite the storms and the darkness and the intensity of the elements around. And for me, it is a reminder that we are more resilient than we give ourselves credit for. That we are stronger than we give ourselves credit for. Think back to a time when we may have been subjected to cold and dark and intensity. A time when we may have felt the heat in both cases, in this extremes of human experience, it may have been hard to imagine how we would get through it. We may have asked ourselves how we would survive and how we would go on. And somehow we did. Somehow, even when we don't know how to do it, life clings to us and we cling to life because our nature is to bloom and grow. And in the midst of crisis, it may be helpful to remember the words of Paul in Romans 8, verse 28, when he says that all things work together for the good. That even in the midst of crisis, when we are facing a difficult time in our life, let us remember that all things work for the good and that we are like Edelweiss, that like Edelweiss, we have faced challenges before and we will likely face challenges again. And what we can remember is that darkness and light are seasonal and we can hang on to whatever anchors us in our faith, whatever represents strength for us. Through dark winters or bearing heat, let us remember that everything is seasonal and we have strength to carry us through and that we will emerge to enjoy the sunshine again. Like the Edelweiss, we are resilient. We are strong. Each one of us is stronger than we think we are. And our nature is to live. Our nature is to bloom and grow. Second, we are clean and bright. There's a theme of purity and innocence. The name Edelweiss comes from German words, Edel, which means noble, and Weiss, which means 
white. Noble in this sense is the trait of being principled, of being honest and upright, something which I would hope that we all aspire to. And white is considered a symbol of purity and innocence, a symbol of honesty and perfection. The flower then is considered to be a symbol of pure moral values, edel meaning noble, and perfect innocence, weiss meaning white. And could we apply the idea of being noble and innocence to ourselves? Do we think of ourselves as noble and innocent? Some of us might feel quite resistant to this idea. And yet, we can easily identify and admire those traits in others who we consider to be honest and upright. We can see the innocence in a newborn child. We certainly have no trouble seeing Edelweiss present in small children. I've often wondered how it is that we shift from living in this, this space of innocence, which has its own noble, nobility, to living in shame and regret. And frankly, and I hope I don't offend too many people with this, but frankly, I think that much of our reason for experiencing shame and regret comes from the traditional concept of original sin, which is found in a more traditional Christianity. The concept that we are born broken, that we are born unworthy. I passionately disagree that we are born unworthy. I passionately disagree that we are born because of the original sin of a story about Eve. First, I find it insulting to the creator. And second, I find it personally insulting. <laughs> Of course, you are absolutely free to agree or disagree with me. However, I think that where that came from, that whole story of original sin and being cast out of the Garden of Eden, is really because we wanted to find a way to explain why life can be uncomfortable at times. For example, why childbirth is so painful. And so we've created stories to try and make it easier to bear these pains. And then we've learned to believe the stories. And I think our main work in this human experience is to question those stories that we've come to believe and then to form new ideas, which will bring us more freedom. And I've been long enough, I've been around long enough to recognize that many of us, maybe each of us, has done things that we wish we hadn't done, that, or said things that we wish we hadn't said, or experienced things that we would prefer not to experience in the future and would love to have not experienced at all. We all have stuff. And the idea of Edelweiss as a symbol of noble innocence can be a powerful reminder that with few exceptions, what we did, what we said, and how we coped was the best that we could do at the time with the knowledge, the resources, the energy, and the ability we had. And if we are willing to shift our ideas about the things we regret, we might be able to see 
the innocence of how we responded. And we might be able to see the innocence in how others interacted with us when they have done things that felt harmful. What if we could embrace the idea that we too are noble and innocent, that we are just like the Edelweiss, small and white, clean and bright, because we are. And then the third point I want to bring to your consideration is that we have the power to bless. Have you ever looked at something and felt uplifted by its beauty? I think it's the reason we enjoy flowers. It's the reason we give flowers. It's the reason we enjoy sunsets and sunrises and going for walks in the woods and looking at beautiful views, the ocean, mountains. In the song, we see the words, you look happy to meet me. And for me, this is a reminder about our power to uplift others just by how we show up. As I thought about the words, I realized that I could ask myself some questions based on the sentence, you look happy to meet me. For example, do I look happy in general, allowing my beauty to shine? Or do I tend to be a complainer? Am I indifferent? Do I just kind of not do any of it? When I see others, do I look happy to meet them? Do I greet them warmly and let them know that I see their beauty? Do I take the time to be present with them? My family is amazing at this. When we greet each other, there is always an effort to make a fuss. We put the kettle on and we give each other hugs and we get the cookies out. And there's this sense of welcome and worth embedded in the meeting. When we show up content, bright, happy, when we greet and look happy to meet people, we are a force of upliftment for others and for ourselves. We bless our homeland, our heart, our home, our minds, when we show up happy, content, and bright for ourselves. And we bless the hearts, minds, and homes of those who we meet. And if quantum theory is to be believed, which is that we are all networked together, a network of all, then we are one system. And when we bless and uplift ourselves and others, we actually have an impact on the whole. When we look happy, content, and bright, we uplift the world. And so, when we sing the song Edelweiss, let it serve as a reminder that we are like Edelweiss. Like, like Edelweiss, we are connected to the mountain, blooming, growing, a part of nature, a part of life. We are, like Edelweiss, strong and resilient. Like Edelweiss, our nature, our innate nature, our built-in nature, the nature we are born with is pure, 
clean, bright, and innocent. And like Edelweiss, we are beautiful. With our beautiful presence, we look happy to meet. And we uplift and bless the world. When we sing the song, let us sing it as a love song to ourselves every day. When we sing the song, let us sing it as a love song to the people around us every day. And one powerful way to do this is to replace the word Edelweiss with your name or with the name of someone you care about. As I say these words, when I say the word Edelweiss, insert your name here and see how it changes your appreciation for the song and for yourself. Edelweiss. Edelweiss, every morning you greet me, small and white, clean and bright, you look happy to meet me, blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever, Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Bless my homeland forever. We are, each of us, Edelweiss, connected to the one, and in that connection, blooming and growing. We are resilient. We are innocent. We are beautiful. And we are a blessing in the world. Amen. Happy to meet me, blossom of snow, may you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, bless my homeland forever. of snow may you bloom and grow, bloom and grow forever. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, bless my homeland You are invited to join us on Mondays at 11 o'clock for our weekly prayer service. It is a time where we get together on Zoom and we connect with each other. We 
share how we are doing with each other, we move into a time of guided prayer. And we read the names of the people who are on our prayer list. And it is a time of renewal, of connection. It is a profound experience of recentering. And so I invite you to join us for that. And if you would like your name or you know someone who you would like to have added to that prayer list, then please email us at unityofnewwestminster at gmail.com and we'll be sure to have the person's name or your name added to our list. Mondays at 11. You are invited to join us on the last Friday of the month for our Friday night house party and talent night. It is on Zoom. It is hosted by Jerry and it is at seven o'clock. It is a time for those who have talents that they want to share to bring those to the light with singing and reading or playing an instrument or telling jokes and making us all laugh. It is also a chance where several of us may not have anything that we want to share, but we want to be part of the experience. And so it becomes a place where we just chat and have some really fun, fun times learning more about each other. Friday night, last Friday of the month on Zoom at seven o'clock. Join us. It's yard sale time. Our yard sale will be held on Saturday, September the 4th, the Saturday of the Labor Day weekend. Here is your opportunity to donate your retired treasures so others can enjoy them too. Donations may be dropped off at the church on Wednesdays and Fridays between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. from August 25th and until the day before the sale. The Labor Day Saturday yard sale, Saturday, September the 4th from 9 a.m. until noon. Audrey Pound was one of our beloved members here at Unity of New Westminster for many, many years. She was dearly loved and is deeply missed. A celebration of her life is planned for Saturday, September the 11th at one o'clock. We are planning for that to be held in person as well as to be live streamed and we are aware of the current upward trend of COVID numbers. If we deem it prudent or if provincial health regulations change, we may choose to postpone her celebration once again, or perhaps limit attendance at her celebration of life. But for now, we are planning to go ahead on Saturday, September the 11th at 1 p.m. for the celebration of life for our dear Audrey Pound. Our food pantry is one year old. For those of you who may not be aware, we have a food pantry that is just on the outside of the church building and is available and accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week for anyone to take food if they need it and to drop food off if they have spare. And at the moment, our inventory is quite low. And so I am asking you to take a look in your cupboards or the next time that you're at the grocery store, pick up an extra can or two of some food and please drop it off at the food pantry. It has been a real success. People have taken food and left food a lot over the course of this year. And so I'd love to see that continue going. 
and to do that we want to have lots of inventory there so people can take it if they need to so please inject some food into that food pantry canned goods only thanks There are many, many ways to give to our organization, either through credit card online or um, direct interact transfers or checks or cash. We are so grateful for the generosity of the contributions that we receive, which support not just our ministry, but also organizations in our own community that do amazing work and Unity Canada that spreads the message of unity across the country. Thank you for your contributions. I invite you now to hold whatever you feel blessed for in your hands, in your heart, financial, family, roof over your head, food on the table, just whatever you are feeling blessed with as we sing our blessing song. And we come to the end of another service. I thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed your experience with us today. I wish you all a very, very blessed week. Goodbye, everybody.
I am the light of God. I am the love of God. I am the power of God. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. I am the light of God. I am 